Okay, so I've just gone through and did this whole layout and then realized the camera didn't turn on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go live from here. And so basically what I've done on it is I've taken scraps in um, different colors and I've cut these into um, a three and a half by three and a half squares and I just have strips that I've um, taken from a scrap piece of paper and put them at the top and the bottom. And then I went to go find my pictures and realized that um, the camera wasn't on. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up from here. So I found a couple pictures that I'm gonna cut down and try and cut them to a three by three to mat them in the middle. So these are my grandkids with their Christmas gifts. And so I'm just gonna make it a three by three square. And even though this is a whole picture, they don't, no one's going to know that they were taken as one. You still get the one in the one picture and the other in the other picture. And it doesn't have to be together. No one will know the difference. Same thing if you want to chop a old boyfriend out or whatever. You, no one will know what the original picture looked like. Only you do and you just edited it. So. All right. So these are now three by three. And then I'm just going to cut him as much of the background out and try and leave a little bit of the tree. I am going to cut out his tractor probably that he got for Christmas, but that's okay because I have other pictures that are my scrapbook of him with his Christmas tractor. And what I also do is I use the guides up here to kind of visualize what my picture will look like once I cut it. So I can see that I can kind of pull it up like this far and not chop his head off. So here's the line here, his head's there. And so that's a great way if you're not visual where you can kind of go through and hack a little off the top and a little bit off the bottom. So now that I've taken the bottom, I can now move it to the three inch mark and I know that I'm not gonna cut his head off and he's pretty square into the picture at three inches. So I'm going to do the same thing the other way. I know I don't want some of this behind, so I'm gonna line this up and see where it is, like here's the three inch mark in the line. And I can go all the way to here, leaving most of the tractor and most of the tree in without cutting it up. And then you get a, a decently trimmed and you lose a lot of the busyness in the background. You still see the tree. You can still see it's Christmas. You can see, still see the majority of his tractor. We know it's a case tractor. So you're not losing a ton of the detail by cutting it down to the three by three size. Same thing with the circus tent that we got him for a reading nook. Um, you'll be able to look at that and know it's a tent that he got. And it's, you know, it's enough there to tell the story. And then with, again with Preston, the tree in the background, it's enough to tell it's Christmas time. So now we're just going to go ahead and arrange these on the page. And so for like this one, he's looking in. So he's either going to go here or here. I kind of like it here. With Preston, he's looking this way, so I want him looking in. And then Dylan with this one, he's kind of looking this way. So I think I like it like this. I'm just going to go ahead, and I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to go ahead and glue it down. number three. Now when I went to look for my pictures, I also went and looked for um, like some sequins. So I grabbed a bunch. I got some twine and then I found some wood veneer. And what I saw that kind of caught my eye 
was the ornament, which I thought I could hang down and get that on a layout. I kind of like the cheer. So I'm pulling the red and the red. I don't think two of them would fit real good. And I, I like prefer the red. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Sometimes less is more. I know you want to sometimes get everything on the layout. But... I tend to like be more of a minimalist, and when it looks good enough for my eye, it's good enough for my eye. I can stop. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these down because I'm happy with the, where those are. And I'm really not overthinking this. It's just going to be a simple page. And again, this is all just using scraps that I had from different paper pads that I've cut apart. And this is just um, Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive in a fine line bottle. Good thing about it, it does wipe up. No harm, no foul. Put a little bit more on since it kind of came off. And we'll put this on top. So that goes good there. And then one of the things I've done in the past that I think is kind of a cool textured look is I take the twine and it has a natural curl to it sometimes from being on the roll, but I just allow it to loop. And I just loop it onto the page like that. And it's kind of like confetti. So then I just take my quick dry and I just put a few dots here and there to tack it down. So I like that there, and I think I'm going to run one up here to make it look like it's holding the ornament up. And this even has a hole in it, so what I think I'll do is just kind of poke it through the hole. It will go. There it goes. And again, tack it down.
And then I think I'll do one more. And I'll just do maybe a little one along here. up here. I kind of like it up there better. And again, I kind of let the um, twine do its own thing because it's been on the roll. Like it, it gives that appearance of um, confetti, kind of a look, party, or wrapping presents, that whole festive kind of look. This one, let me switch it. Yeah, I like that better. I'm going to put some um, confetti or the sequins on there. So where I had that little blue, I'm just going to cover it up with some sequins. And then you can just use your fine line bottle to glue a few. I'm not going to put tons. I'm going more simplistic with it. You can also use Zots for putting um, the sequins down. I've used those quite a bit. I just happen to be out of them. So the quick dry works, just that sometimes you get it all over your fingers. And so it can be a challenge. I do have tweezers, but I don't feel like getting them out or gumming them up. So I'm just going to go with the fingers being gumped. And then I'm just going with gold, green, red. And I might put silver in. And I'm just sprinkling them here and there. And like I said, I'm not going to go overboard with them. I don't need a lot, just a few. Because again, it's just kind of showing that celebration kind of a look. We're celebrating the presents, celebrating the season. And so confetti kind of works with that. And you could do the same thing for like a birthday um, or any kind of an event where it's a party, anniversary party, things like that. Put a few 
few more on. And now it kind of, to me, looks a little stark on the edges. So what I'm probably going to do is take my pen and just put a border on the pen, around the outside. And that kind of just brings it in and frames it. And because this is a more of a whimsical look, I'll probably double line it and kind of make the lines wonky. All right, so we're good on the sequence. I'll just put those back when we're done. And we can get rid of these. So let's go ahead and put our doodle border on. Now I like using um, either the um, Pilot G2 or I have the Sharpies. Either one I, I like. I just happened to grab the Sharpie first, so we'll go ahead and go with that. And like I said, I'm going to do double because I really don't, and I'm kind of going to purposely go wonky on the second line. A little wavy. And that way you don't have to strive for perfection because it looks like you purposely went wonky. Which we did. And there we go. Now let's see if there's anything else. I think at this point, it's simple. You could stop now. I do have my embellishments, embellishment bin next to me. I just keep all of my embellishments in this pocket type folder and then it is overheaping. So I just kind of thumb through and just see if there's anything that we could sprinkle on and we could sprinkle on the gems but they're uh, mainly there's some green but there's mainly yellow blue so I think I'm going to not use these because I don't want to introduce the new color let me just kind of quick go through and see if there's anything I really want to put on. I do have these penguins and I've been trying to use them up. We can see if maybe we can put one with each. Nope, we'll do this. There's, we'll go with the presents instead. Since this is a picture of them with their presents, I think that will work. Yeah, I'm good with that. So let's see if we can tuck a couple of them in. And these are just Paper Studio from Hobby Lobby. I've had them forever. So we'll just see if we can tuck a couple of them inside like this and then what I also have is some Chanel buttons or hip kit club. Let me see. I 
And there's a couple of those, so we can put those to bridge that little gap right there. That looks good. Put one right here. We can use a little button on that one. And we'll go with another red one. Actually, this green one's tall and thin, so we'll go with the green one. If it wants to peel off. joy and I'm going to say that's good enough we don't need anything else so there you go this is um, would be day 11 and again I'm sorry that it got cut off um, well, you missed I was trying to do more of a quilt layout and it took a turn and ended up being like this and I'm kind of happy with it actually before we hang up I might do one thing just to see got one more idea I don't know if this is gonna work or not and if I have enough But we can make each of the pictures a present. And I do have three of the red. So that'll work. So then it makes it look like each of the presents are a present, or each of the squares are, are a present. And then there's a present coming off the side. And we'll give it a little bit of adhesive. Okay, come on, stick. I still have adhesive on my fingers from the sequence, so there's, the bow is coming off. There. Now it looks like each of the, the pictures is a present on the strip. So again, I hope you like the layout. It was a very simple, very quick layout. They don't all have to be masterpieces. Um, just get the pictures in. I want to thank you guys for joining us for today's uh, 12 Days of Christmas Hop. Again, this is day 11. Um, check the link below for everyone else who is also joining along uh, today for the hop. And again, my intention is after the 12 days are up, I'm still going to go back and do day 6 and day 7. Um, for the ones I had to miss with my dad in the hospital. He's actually coming home today, so all's good. Um, so I, hopefully I can get back on track with everything and get my house decorated and finish up with what I've got. I'll put a few close-ups on the end. And again, thank you so much for joining me today, and you have a wonderful day.